is a fun fabric panel. I'm seeing a skirt. I'll show you what I'm gonna make. Coming up. So my challenge for this month is to do something creative. Make a new skirt. <laughs> and my creative thing I want to work on this month is using panels. And I'm choosing panels this month because I need it to be an easy month because <laughs> I'm going to the West Coast from North Carolina here twice and I don't have a lot of time. So panels I've done before. I actually have had, I have had many other videos with skirts that I've made from panels. I've had this fabric in my stash for a while. I bought it a couple years ago. I just loved it. I thought I'm gonna challenge myself to make something out of it. So this month, this is the time. Yes, I'm gonna make a skirt. And something actually came to me very quickly the other day and I was like, Wow, that is so great. So my plan is, actually before I tell you my plan, uh, I wanted to show you some other panels real quick. So if you don't know what fabric panels are, you may not because they were uh, new to me a couple years ago and I've been sewing for a long time. And I don't do quilting, so um, you'll find these a lot more in quilting stores. But I found this beautiful panel in a store in Tennessee. Beautiful painting, oh my gosh. So. How I discovered them first was I was going to the Van Gogh exhibit and I was in Tennessee and I found this panel here. Cool. It was the irises by Van Gogh. And I made it into a skirt. So the side is the whole iris right here. And then I had this beautiful panty silk velvet. I bought this in tennis, both in different stores. And I put this skirt together. And then I found also this panel. This was a uh, Lily, the, I can't remember the name of the painting. There's a couple there. It's all twisted around here like that. <laughs> but you might remember this video. It's back there. I'll put a link below for these videos if you want to see it. My friend, uh, I made this for my friend Stacy and I made the other one for me and we went to the Van Gogh exhibit and uh, walking around in the gift shop and people are like, where's that skirt? <laughs> I'm like, it's not here. <laughs> There's only one, and we made it. So well, I made it. I taught Stacy to sew, but uh, I made that real quick for her. There's another panel. So after I did that panel, I was like, I was hooked on panels. I was like, these are so fun because I love to put art into fashion. And this is another panel I found. This one I was in a fabric store in Big Bear, uh, California, and I was looking on the walls, and I was like, oh, birds. There's another one, a beautiful. I didn't bring it to my shop today, but it's had a big bear on it oh my gosh and I did a video on that one too but this was the birds and I love birds so I put I teamed it up with a different this is a whole different pattern I don't know just so much fun to wear and to and to make actually to see art come together but I love working with panels so um, actually my newest panel here I bought this just because I don't know why I'm doing well, I'm actually doing another challenge probably the following month on digital prints and uh, I came across this one as I was doing a little research and it's a map I don't know if I have it backwards it's a nautical map of uh, something <laughs> it's all there so I love the boats right here wow so I gotta do something with this I just gotta find the right colors and wow which will all, it'll all come together later but and it's really soft so I thought this would make such a pretty skirt so it's coming but I had this other idea for digital print which I'm gonna do following month and um, I gotta make I gotta make my own fabric and I want to put airplanes on it because it's gonna have to do with postcards that I got from other countries and then this airplane fabric all that but back to the pan panels challenge <laughs> anyway so to use this fabric that I bought a couple years ago. For starters, when I found it, I was thinking, oh, this would make a great skirt for my friend Linda, who is a director, and she goes to film festivals all the time and wins awards. And I thought, this would be so great for her to wear to one of her film festivals and, um, and uh, be in front of the step and repeat and Whoa. get photos. So I think what I'm going to do is make it for me and then maybe give it to her. <laughs> We'll see if I love it or not. I'm also I'm going to California twice this month, and I'm um, one for a, a for costume designer guild. I'm in the guild, and we have a, 
a union meeting, which I haven't been to uh, quite a while, so I thought this would be fun to wear there. And then I have a couple of other meetings, so I've just got to pick which one. But I'm actually leaving next week, so I'm going to have to get this skirt done. So many things to do with this. Now, my idea for this skirt is it's very strange. This is the map right here. So I'm going to do the rosy skirt, which is this skirt, and it's a square right here. This one's actually a two-layer one, but I'm going to do, uh, it's a square circle skirt, I call it. And there's a circle in the middle. Um, it's actually not quite a circle. It's a U because it fits onto the the hip yoke, uh, so I'll do the hip yoke black, and then uh, the panel only fits part, like where I put the lines right here. I had to map this out to get it in my brain a little bit. And then I'm gonna put black Supima cotton right here, so then I'm gonna wear it this way, and the front will be the panel and then a black strip, and then of course this drops down that way. And on the back, it'll be part of the panel black strip and a black strip. So it's sort of like a patchwork. So I'm thinking this will be really cool. Now I know this is all going to be, it's meant to be, let's say, because I found, well, I have, I love black Supima cotton and I cannot find it anywhere anymore. Um, I literally found this at Joann's a year or so ago and they stopped making it because they said it was too expensive. It was $15 a yard. And I don't know, I see a lot of fabrics for cotton's even $15 a yard. I don't know what the problem was, but <laughs> but you know, I have this weird piece right here. So I'm going to put my yokes in this piece and then I have this strip. Because see, I, when I made a skirt, I didn't throw anything out because I love this fabric and I patch it together if I have to. But I have this one other sliced piece in there, which is perfect for, it actually literally matches the dimensions I need for the back strip and then the, the yoke and everything. It's I'm going to use almost every bit of this piece of fabric. So I know the skirt is meant to be. That's all I can say. And I'm, and then I finally, after two years, have come up with an idea to, for this skirt. And it involves the rosy skirt again. <laughs> so did you know I'm making, um, I'm writing a book about my skirts. And uh, yeah, it's coming very slow. So you'll see it in, uh, you know, a few years from now. <laughs> but, but anyway, so um, yeah. So now I'm gonna start on this skirt. This will be my little challenge for the month and a creative challenge for recession proof your wardrobe use what you have so i'm using scrap of this and this has been around for two years so you know got to use what i have and i'm really excited to do this skirt so i'm going to get it started and um, i have to double check double check before i cut it because i have to cut a hole right in the middle of this so to start i have the pattern um, i have this pattern available uh, down the links below and it's all um, I can six it's all a 1a through B like the yoke is right here what I do is I bump the papers up next to each other I don't overlap them so they're like that and uh, so that doesn't take up too much paper I think there might be 12 16 18 I don't know, pieces of paper um, so I have my yoke I have to I think I'm gonna cut the black first but I got to see what uh, I forgot what uh, dimensions I was going to put on this. And uh, this is the paper pattern uh, all taped together. But what I have, I guess I could use this. I actually, when I drafted this pattern, I put it in muslin right here. And um, I like to use this because uh, it's just a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to put this to the side and work with the muslin here. So, all right, I have this figured out. I'm going to cut my back piece right here, and I'm going to take it all the way to the end part because the um, other side panel I wanted to use the cross width, the cross um, the width of the fabric, but it's six, what, three or four inches too short. So I'm just going to add, and this strip is going to go straight to the end here, and then my side panel will be right here I just need that little piece right there now so it's shorter now because I'm added it there and then my yoke <laughs> once I get those cut out I'll be able to line this all up here right there and I kind of pencil that on here and then my yoke will fit 
right here. Here's one and right here. As long as I think my strip goes to here. So I'm piecing out my fabric, <laughs> Mark it, making chalk marks with this uh, Taylor's crayon that I can iron all off. And uh, yeah, I think I squeezed it all in there. It's gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna cut it. If it doesn't work, I can make it work. All right. So that's all I have left of that little scrap. Talk about using up your scraps, right? So I have uh, my pieces and I can resume this tomorrow because I have a class coming in. Can't wait to get started on it. All right, I'm back to work on my skirt. I only have about an hour. So um, I think what I'm gonna do first is just before I go ahead and cut the hole out here, I have it drawn out right there. I'm going to, right, right there, between the camera. That's a bummer, but I could have put the circle on the other side, but I want the palm tree and the like lights. And yeah, so that's okay. On a skirt, you're probably not gonna know it's a camera, so it's okay. But what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and just sew those strips on. I have my map right here. So I'm gonna sew on the black strip here and then the one strip here. See how I like it because I don't really have to um, I have to kind of cut this edge off. I don't even have to cut that edge off there. I could just put it on there first, but it's not going to matter. But then I was thinking, I always put like a band between the yoke and the skirt. Like I have the gray one over there. There's like a little gray ribbon in there. And I was looking at some of my fabric and I have this gray. Kind of looks good. But then I was like, hey, there's this band, the gray all that's all gonna be chopped off. So if I don't have to cut off too much on one of them, I could use that in between the, the yoke. That's where the, I don't know where my yoke went, right here. The yoke right here, and then the, the color right there. So it'll all be part of that skirt. So I think I'm gonna see what I, see if I have that, like there. I'd have to like double it up like that, or just tear it um, and see how the tear looks on there because it's sometimes cool to have just the raw edge on there. All right, I'm going to sew those strips on. Then I'll look in the mirror and see how that all works. And then if I'm good with it, I'll cut the circle out. All right, now I have a complete square for a square circle skirt. Yeah, that turned out really good. So I'm going to hem this. Okay, to start hemming this, I clip these one inch because I just need an inch for each side. So I'm going to cut this off here. And that's a little bit almost right there. There. Then all I got to do is press that right up on, the, on that fold right at the edge, and then I'm going to tuck it under a half and a half. And then so the gray is going to show on that end, and that'll be all right like that. And then the other side is also an inch. I clip that. This one's a little off. I'll tear that. Oh my gosh, all these little hairs. This keeps it from fraying on the inside too, and then it also just keeps it really straight because when you tear it on the grain line, it... Uh, it's exactly straight and then it just really hems really nice just doesn't you don't get any curls in it like that or limited curls all right to the ironing board and press all this up all right i have my hem all pressed i like to press the hems really good before i stitch it because then it doesn't get a curl on it and then a couple pins around it just keeps it nice and even because i want my hems to be flat the biggest decision is what thread to use. So I was going to use black um, because I guess mainly because of the black going around this side, although teal might look kind of cool. Huh. I was wondering when I get through here, there'll be, I'm going to use the, the bobbin color is the one that's going to show because I'm going to stitch it from the uh, bottom up or wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the black will show here, and especially these peaks, I'm going to have to, I like to kind of give a little extra, but I'm just going to have to pivot it right there because it'll really show. Um, unless I find a teal. 
I don't know, because then the teal would, I mean, I can do, I can change the bobbin out when I get to the black part, but actually the teal might be kind of cool on this to see it. That might, I'd actually like that. Okay, I found two teal bobbins in my stash here. <laughs> I think I might do this. That would be kind of fun to bring this in here, top stitch teal right there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I think that's the same color. Looks like the same color, but this one wasn't quite round right. It's a squishy bobbin, as we call it. Uh-oh, my students make these bobbins, so I think I'm gonna take this one apart. But um, Use this one, because you don't want a squishy bobbin, and your thread, your stitch won't come out well. But yeah, that's actually, I'm gonna do that. I think that'll be fun. Okay, have them all hemmed. That's how the teal looks on there. I like it. It looks really cool. Just a little extra detail. Yeah, so the whole thing's hemmed. Now I gotta cut out the donut. But I also came across <laughs> this fabric in my stash because I'm trying to use up all my fabric. Not all of it. Well, eventually, but stop buying fabric. <laughs> And uh, I have this fabric here. So I was looking at this. I was like, oh, this would be kind of pretty as a second layer under here. Just like a peeking out a little bit because it's really thin cotton. It's just thin. It's metallic. So the metallic is kind of like Hollywood. And then the little dots. This is like a Swiss dot with metallic threads really pretty and light so that might be like a really cool little layer peeking out of here yeah i don't know just a little bit right there so now i have to uh put on the yoke and i've got these uh this is from the border right here i'm gonna try it if i don't like the light on there i'll change it and find something else because i can always find a organza ribbon or something like that but i kind of like put that exact gray in there to see how it looks. It's gonna be hard to tell until I get it all pinned on there. I'm gonna take a break and uh, come back to this tomorrow because I only had about an hour and uh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I gotta get this finished though. I'm gonna wear this this weekend. I'm back to work on my skirt. Actually, I just got my new tank tops in the mail last night. I made samples. I designed this a long time ago and I started a the online printing t-shirts. I have it on my website. It says, I give up. I'm just going to make this my fashion statement. And it has thread all over it. Because I was like, I'm always like lint rolling myself. I always wear black. And then now I have a white dog. That wasn't very bright. But, <laughs> but I always have threads all over myself. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to make it a fashion statement. Because everybody goes, you have a thread there. And I'm like, hey, whatever. <laughs> so, but, uh, so I made a funny t-shirt out of it be fun. It's my first go around with uh, uh, making t-shirts. Then I have one with cats. The, um, this really funny picture I uh, took and then had it painted. So it's, I'm sewing with cats. And then, uh, and then a cool pair of pants. And actually a couple other things. I'm just starting to add them on there. So they're on my website if you want to find them. They're at futurefashiondesigners.com and it goes through the products. It's um, they're in there somewhere. Anyway, I'll put a link at the bottom if you wanted to look at it. But I'm gonna make some more. Um, I'm gonna do a T-shirt of it. But this is a tank top. I love it. I'm like, and actually, it's really comfortable. So, wow, I really like it. I'm gonna order more. <laughs> but I'm get back onto my skirt. I gotta do the yoke. So I'm gonna sew these uh, right sides together. Gotta make sure I get the really pretty side. Open these um, this pattern up. The yokes are so simple. You just do the. Oh, I had to. That's right. I gotta do a lining in here. I always, I don't have to, but I usually put like a like lining. It just gives it a little extra base. And just put these two right sides together. And then you sew the two seams right here. Five eighths here and five eighths here. You match them up. And then I'm going to get a black lining and do the same to that. So I have a double. I have the yoke sewn right here. Just two simple side seams. Now I have to cut. The circle out. Okay, I think I'm ready to do this. <laughs> just got to cut this circle. I lost part of my marking, but I think when I fold it in half, I just got to do the half. So I got to get this exactly. So now that my border's on here, I'll have the half. I think that's going to work. Let's see. 
I'm going to get this. Okay, I got these in half, sort of. <laughs> Not be exact. Because when you hem it and stuff, one might be an inch, one might be an inch and an eighth. Oh, the bump under there is the seam. Okay, there is my half. I'm going to check it by putting pins here and seeing how it looks on the other side. There. One right here, one right here. I lost that one. So pretty good. Okay. Yes. Now, <laughs> ready to cut a hole in my skirt. Just go for it. I'm going to do pinking shears so that eliminate some of the fraying. Okay. All right. There is the hole. Now, I want to also mark my center. So I got this center. I'm going to put a line there. Usually I'll do a clip too. I'll do a little clip here. Tiny, tiny. Just because when I'm, sometimes the chalk might, these chalk marks, if I iron it, will come off. Then I gotta find the half of this. Which I'll just find this. And then I'll make a couple little, little nips here. Because that is the center front and the center back, I believe. A lot of times what I'll do here is put like a V. I'll put like a slit here and then a V here. Like a little tiny V. So I know the V's are the center fronts. It looks like that. And then the slits over here are the sides. Okay, now there is the yoke. It's going to go here, right there. And then I have these little the selvages, the selvages are right here. And I have that. So I actually have to add uh, the other piece. So I have two of them. I'm going to have to sew them together. And then I'm going to baste separate this here and then baste this on. I think I'm going to like this. When I look at um, the, the light gray here with the black, it really offsets all these other uh, grays in here. So I th it all makes it work. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it. Now. Okay, all attached. Now i got to attach the yoke to this. I'm going to put right sides together and uh, sew that on. Although if I want to do this extra lining under here, this is when I would do that. But I'm not sure I want to. So, so I guess I will baste this on here. Then I'm going to try it on and uh, see if I like it just like that and then decide if I want to add a little lining to peek out here. Okay, have it sewn right there. Just basted it on. I started from the white side. It was easier to get there. So then I wrap it out here. See how it looks? Oh my gosh. It looks really good. But wow, I really like it. It looks cool, especially this side right here. Like that. Oh, that is cute. What a fun skirt. Now, I think I'm not going to do the second layer. I think it adds a lot of confusion. And then I want to wear this in the summer and um, keep it on the light side. So I can always add it later, but I think I'm just going to go without. Have the elastic prepped. So I got quarter to quarter. And I'm going to stretch it and sew it like that. <laughs> and I have each quarter done right here. And now I'm just going to go sew it. Ta da! Skirt is done! Hollywood! Wow! <laughs> is it? cute skirt. That is really fun. The gray turned out really good. Although, I, um, yeah, it's got a little bit of puckers on it. It was kind of straight because it was on the selvage, so it was not the ideal one to do. But yeah, this turned out really great. Now, my next part I have to do is add the stencils. I'm going to um, cut all those little stencils out right here and add them to the skirt. I like to do, like this is the back um, the back left hip right here. I like to, I'm going to put them, like, not everywhere, but just kind of in the, I always like to put them on the back left. I don't know why. It's very odd now that I think about it. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm going to do that. And then 
add them to um, kind of sporadically around and then even on the blue and add them definitely into this black spot right here so stars and yeah that's really going to add to it so i just have some black or i have white fabric paint at home and i'm just gonna get the little those little foam brushes and dab them in there and i think i'll test it on the scraps first though too so yeah that's a good idea <laughs> always a good idea <laughs> but uh yeah so all i have left to do is to paint that and part of the whole challenge of using what i have i use the panel and actually all i have left of the panel is this <laughs> so i gotta throw that away and then i have some scraps the the black sapima and that's all i have of is this and now i'm actually going to use this to practice on um the stencils with the fabric paint oh i do also have this circle i don't know what to do with it it's a camera right interesting <laughs> So, I don't know. But uh, I'm going to go and paint these at home. And I got my skirt done in plenty of time for my California trip. Where I'm going to go and thaw out. <laughs> going to thaw myself out. I'm going to have to wear boots with the skirt, though. Um, so I have to pack the boots. I'm only taking a carry-on. But uh, I like to wear sandals there. So, But it's only going to be like 70. So, oh well. I'm going to thaw out just a little bit. <laughs> anyway. All right. I'll show you uh, how those stencils look. So that practice session was quick, showed me that I need to use the spray glue and do it the second time. Cause like the spray glue made that, got the sticker on it or got the sticky stuff on it right away. So the second time I did it, I got that really good star and then uh, that one, but I was being sloppy. I got it around there and then I'll get it on my fingers. So I have to have paper towel close by, uh, a damp one so that I, you know, don't get it on the fabric. <laughs> so I um, came into my studio to paint it because I have a bigger table and more light here and, and I don't have Mo walking around and getting white fur all over everything. That's <laughs> what he does. So I um, just kind of chalked in some marks about where I want it to be. So I'm gonna, I always like them on my left side. So I'm gonna put a few on the yoke on the left side and a few on the other part. And then in the back, now this is where all that black is. So I'm going to put some stencils more on the back here, but more kind of on the left side and then a couple scattered over here like that. And then a few on the blue. So um, I don't know where they went, but I'm going to just go around it like quarter by quarter, paint it, and thank gosh it uh, dries fast. So I'll just do like quarter by quarter. And then when I get really good at it, I'll put it on the yoke. Because, uh, yeah, <laughs> the more you do, you, got, you get the little... You know practices of it and then they turn out better and better like that unless you're not paying attention then they you know don't <laughs> so all right i'm gonna get to paint this see the star i'm going to spray the stars and then put them on the fabric and uh, let them get some of the glue off so i'll do like that i got two at a time just kind of make it really light oh i hope that glue doesn't stick <laughs> And then I gotta tear that in half and stick them on a couple spots here. Put them right over the little circles. Yeah. Here's another one. I'll lightly spray. Get it on this black piece here. That kind of help it take off some of it. And then put them on there. And my hands are all sticky already. <laughs> wow. Okay. Get that center done. Center out. This one's got some little flakes on it. You're gonna prevent the paint from getting on there. Wow. It's always something. Okay. <laughs> and I got my uh, fabric paint. I hope that's fabric paint. Yeah, dimensional fabric paint. I have acrylic paints mixed up with my other stuff. And I'll just paint them like that. Let it dry for a little while. Get them really straight. I wonder if I should do two layers. Painting on the blue part now. Getting a little more comfortable. <laughs> okay. And I want to see if one of these is that was the one I did. Try this one. 
this up here. Okay. When did I do this one? Looks a little wet. Oh, this one's bad. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> oh no. Okay, that was a complete fail. Maybe that could be the moon. Wait, wait a second. Oh shoot. Okay, that was really bad. How am I gonna fix that? Oh man. I'll make it a moon. I'll put some circles. That's all I, that's all I can do. Stars and moons, I guess. Take this one off. Ooh, nice. It's a star. Okay. Put that one somewhere. Over here. Okay, better let this all dry. I'll take these off. Oh man, stressful. <laughs> so after you finish the skirt, then you paint it. It is a little stressful. You gotta be sure. Okay, I think I just have all these stars in one moon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I let this dry, then I'm gonna finish them up the yoke. Well, went home last night and painted more stars on. I've got stars on my hip now. <laughs> I put some stars on uh, the left hip right here and I have stars all along the borders here. Kind of makes the whole panel work together. This is the back. Got it all grouped up here. Small dress form. <laughs> wow. I love the stars. I kind of I might, I'm starting with a few stars. I might put more later. Some of them you can tell were painted on, which, you know, they're painted on. What are you going to do? <laughs> and my moon uh, stands out a lot. <laughs> I was hoping that would fold in, but actually, maybe on me it might fold in. I don't know. Of course, it's going to be right there, right? So, so the stars and the moon. <laughs> so there we go. So we got the Hollywood. And I love the palm tree right here. And then Hollywood and that font right there. He's a link. And there we go. And this is California there. So I love the stars really made it come together. So I used my the challenge last month, the stenciling onto the panel challenge of this month and new skirt. <laughs> so I'm going to wear that this weekend to the Costume Designer Guild uh, Union meeting. We have our, uh, we have them quarterly. Yes, and I haven't been for a while, so um, that's going to be really fun to wear. And I'm going to wear it with uh, black boots. Great. Now, I have my scrapbook, Thread Bosses, Life's an Adventure, where I keep all my projects that I've done. And this is my fabric panels. I've got my Van Gogh skirt in here and some, I think I um, bought this panel. I couldn't find this panel big, so that's what I promised. So I had smaller ones. And then I bought this panel have to do something with. And then I didn't get this one, but this is like, sometimes you'll see panels with just patches on them and that um, you can cut them up and then put them on fabrics. I have a skirt I did with, had coffee, a bunch of like 10 different coffee sayings, like life is good with that or with coffee or, you know, morning Joe kind of thing. And then I made a skirt out of it. It's a patchwork skirt using those. And then the, I lined it with the fabric I called latte. So it was like a, a latte. <laughs> but uh, I'll put a link uh, down below for that video and you can check that out. So that was a really fun panel project. And then here's some more panels and sometimes they'll come like this. I mean you can cut them up and you do a patchwork or you can cut them up in here. Um, this was a panel too and I love like ideas that you can even use panels on sides of things and then you can even use panels and dresses and uh, pants and all. So don't look over the panels. Go, you know, look into, um, you find them a lot in the quilt shops. I don't know if I've even found them, found them in the regular fabric stores, but take a look and see what, you know, inspires you. So I will uh, put some photos of me in this skirt when I get them this weekend. Uh, and yeah, do some panels. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.